In this video, we're going to simulate some data to take a look at how do we, in a statistical sense, make a judgment on whether the results are bigger than zero or not different from zero. Okay, so first let's start with simulating some normally distributed data. And uh, we're going to use the formula that we have discussed. It's called norm dot and then we, so this is the inverse of norm distribution. And uh, the first parameter is the probability. And here we have rand parenthesis. And so here we're going to simulate data from a normal distribution with the mean, let's say, of 10 and standard deviation of 5. Okay, and then close this and then enter. So if we copy this all the way down, we're going to simulate a thousand data points. So the easier way is to copy the first one, control C, and then scroll down to where we want to stop and hold down the shift key and use the left mouse button. It will select the whole area from the first until last since we have already copied the first cell here we only need to do control v control and v and now it copies down all the data points and then we use f9 to refresh this so now we have a series of random numbers generated from a normal distribution so let's first take a look at how these numbers are distributed. So let's do insert. And there are two ways to see the distribution and we're going to show both of them. First is a way we haven't looked at before is this box and whisker chart. So when you insert a chart of box and a whisker, so here you're going to see that it illustrates a distribution of all these 1,000 data points. So, so let's just call this a box chart. And what a box chart shows you is this. So in the middle, you see this small cross. And this is where the average or the mean of all these 1,000 numbers are. And then you see a colored box. So in the colored box, the lower bound of the color box is the 25 percentile and then the upper bound of the box is the 75 percentile which means 50 percent of your observations are within this colored box here's the lower bound here's the upper bound and when we look at the left we know that the 50 um, the middle 50 percent of data points are approximately between 6 to 14 ish. So that's the data range. And uh, given that we have simulated data from mean of 10, and that makes a lot of sense. It should be in that rough range. And then the whiskers, so we just did a box and a whisker chart. The whiskers are these two lines drawn out. And this reflects the range of the data. So it it, this will be pretty close to the minimum of the data we have. This is pretty close to the maximum of the data we have. And except that there are, as we can see, three outliers being judged by the charting function. That here is a lower bound outlier. Here are two upper bound outliers. But other than these three outlier points, the other 997 data points, they all fall within this range. Okay, so this is a box and whisker chart. It shows you roughly how the data is distributed. And the second way to look at the distribution of the data is to do a histogram, which we have done many times in this course. Go to insert. And again, in this one, so the top is a histogram. Okay. So now, let's rename this histogram. And again, forming a good habit of labeling this. 
the primary horizontal is the value range and primary vertical is the number of observations. Okay, let me uh, edit the bin range. Let's say the bin width is 1, and then the underflow bin is 0. Okay, now let's also give it the overflow bin so that it doesn't go all the way too far. And let's say the overflow bin is 20. Okay, and that's it. So uh, this upper bar and the lower bar looks slightly bigger mainly because uh, all the data points above this they are stacked here so as you can see now we have a histogram of the distribution and if we keep tapping the f9 key we're going to see the distribution changes because we are generating different batches of random numbers and let's say these observations are our test results when we when we run experiments on a marketing campaign in the field so these are the sales increases at different store locations for a large national retail chain and now if i ask you the question that well is the campaign working or not how would you answer this because overall it looks like it it's pretty positive but we do have a few observations here where we have some 28 observations where the results are actually inactive. At least for these 28 stores, we have a negative result in terms of the effectiveness. So the question is, well, how do we make a judgment of the overall result? This is why you have learned the concept of statistical significance in your earlier stack course. The point being that you are not comparing one data point to something anymore. You are comparing a whole a lot of observations to a specific data point of zero. So you have data points that fall below zero, and then how do you make that comparison? And this is why we are doing the statistical tests for significance. And by and large, uh, we are looking at how rare this below zero occasion is. If it's rare enough, we judge them as not really that relevant. And that the overall results, the majority of the observations are much larger than zero. That is the fundamental idea of why we are doing a statistical test. And here we can actually take a look at what's going on by summarizing the data. So let's say we do a count. We look at how many observations we have. If we use Control Shift down to select all the data, parentheses, and enter. So we can see that the total number of the observations is 1,000. How many less than zero? So we can do a count if and again all the observations control shift down and we want to set the criteria as quote less than zero and quote and then close the parenthesis and then enter so here now we can see that we have 28 cases that are below a thousand and how frequent are those cases it's equal to 28 divided by this 1,000 cases. And this is, change this to a percentage format, increasing the decimal points. So this is 2.8% of the cases. Is this 2.8 low enough or is it still too high? So the convention that we use in statistics is to use 5% as a judgment for 
statistical significance. It's really just a description of how rare this case is. Here we have 2.8% of the cases and it's below 5%. And then we consider this below zero cases are rare enough so that we consider the results to be statistically significantly different from zero, in this case above zero. So if we have these 1,000 observations in a statistical test, our conclusion is the result is positive and significant. We consider this campaign as a success. And the average effect of this campaign is equal to the mean of this column. Control shift down and then close this enter. So the mean effect, the average effect is 10. And we know it should be around 10 because that's how we simulate the data with a normal distribution at a mean of 10. So overall, I hope this example demonstrates why we are doing the statistical test on results with a distribution like this. That completes this video.